First of all, I want to say that I've been blown away with the energy of this weekend. It's unbelievable. Seriously. I'm proud and humbled to consider myself among you as a fighter of the good fight. As the non-speaker speaker of the, of the night, uh, I'm going to rely heavily on the audiovisual capabilities of this venue and have uh, the screen behind me show you how I've been fighting that fight. Each of us has our story, and this is mine. It's just one of 10,000 in this room, but I think a good example of how working within each of our individual spheres of influence can make and is making great change. My sphere of influence is within the music community. Five years ago, my wife Lauren and I started the nonprofit Reverb. A large part of our work is helping bands to be more green on tour while engaging their fans to follow suit in their own lives. We create easy opportunities for both the bands and fans to take action. And these actions, even the small ones, have added up to large results. Since starting in 2004, Reverb has worked on over a thousand concert events. 65 major tours, including Jack Johnson, Dave Matthews Band, Lincoln Park, Maroon 5, OAR, and many, many more. Reverb staff travel as part of the band's touring crew to handle the many greening programs we put into place out there on the road. We also set up a festival like Eco Village out front to reach the thousands of fans that come to shows every night. We invite local and national nonprofit groups to be a part of the Eco Village and always try to make it a fun atmosphere by giving, giving away tasty organic treats and prizes like VIP tickets and autographed guitars to incentivize fans to take action right there, right then, on the spot. The results from these tours are significant. Over 60,000 tons of CO2 have been reduced. Thanks. Over 350,000 gallons of biodiesel have been fueled in tour buses and trucks. Over 5,000 eco-volunteers have been recruited across the country, and over 1,600 nonprofit groups have pitched their tent in the Reverb Eco Village that so far has reached over 7.2 million fans. This is the measurable stuff. This stuff doesn't include the qualitative things like conversations that change people's minds and hearts. I was one of those people who had their mind and perspective forever changed by just one person, my wife. Ah, oh, I yeah, know it's sweet. <laughs> I want to briefly share with you my personal journey from being a fairly clueless dude in a rock band to a knowledgeable advocate for the environment. I want to share this not because I have the inflated ego of some pseudo rock star, although that might be true, <laughs> but because I think I'm a typical example of someone who can quickly be roused to join the fight when given the proper tools and information to do so. It all starts with Tufts University in the house. Not because I learned so much there, although I'm sure I did, but because this is where I met both my bandmates and my wife, Lauren. As the band started to grow, we eventually graduated, some of us barely. Uh, we set out on our first cross-country tour. While I was slugging it out on the club scene with Guster, Lauren got her master's degree in environmental education and started her first job working at the Rainforest Action Network in San Francisco, also in the house. It was there that she quickly was thrown into the world of environmental activism. Because of Rand's high-profile campaigns, they were able to partner with celebrities and artists. Lauren took note of the considerable boost that musicians such as Bonnie Raitt and Dave Matthews gave to these campaigns when they added their incredibly powerful voices. In 2000, Lauren and I moved in together. It was there in our tiny apartment in New York City that my environmental journey truly began. Living with an environmentalist is like a crash course of going green. All of a sudden, I was being told what not to throw away, what light bulbs to use, to turn down the heat, what foods are okay to buy, what cleaning products to use, paper from paper and not from trees. You know all about this. After living a more eco-friendly lifestyle at home, it was a harsh transition to go back out on tour. Guster was traveling in a tour bus we nicknamed the Earth Eater because of its incredible fuel guzzling capabilities. I also started to notice all the waste left behind at shows by both the band and the fans. I spoke to my friends in other bands, and they too lamented the fact that touring had such a negative impact on the planet. It was right around this time that Lauren approached me with the idea for Reverb. She had the name and everything. I thought it was exactly what bands were looking for and just what the music industry desperately needed. The music community was my sphere of influence. 
So I called my friends in Bare Naked Ladies, and this became Reverb's first tour in the summer of 2004. From there, we quickly expanded our programs to dozens of tours and moved Reverb's operation from our kitchen table to an office in Portland, Maine. Maine in the hands. In 2006, Guster partnered with Reverb to launch the Campus Consciousness Tour <clears throat> and took all the work we had done on those big summer tours and brought them to campuses. I want to show you a video right now explaining a lot of what I've just said, but probably a lot better. So if you can please cue the video.